we are going to explore and demystify the anatomy of the origins of the cranial nerves. This is something a medical student is commonly tested for, and is also really important when looking at lesions on brain scans and correlating them with clinical deficits. We're going to do two things to make this exercise easier. I'm going to simplify the anatomy in a way that includes enough information for you to recognize the things in an actual brain, but that omits everything else that would be just noise and distraction from the elements that you need to grasp if you want to learn and remember this. And we're going to be looking at the nerves from three different angles at the same time. Anterior, sideways in a midline cut, and from top to bottom. I think this will facilitate your 3D mapping of what you're seeing. Okay, we're going to start from the top, in the order that the cranial nerves were numbered. There are 12 pairs of cranial nerves. The first two pairs don't come from the brainstem. For them, doing the three views is not actually that important, so I'm going to skip this step. They're pretty far away from the others, so it's not actually a challenge to identify them. Pair number one is the olfactory nerve. And while some people mistake this structure for the olfactory nerves, these are actually central structures, called the olfactory striae and olfactory bulbs. The nerve itself is very short and is actually made up of a bunch of tiny filaments that go through the cribriform plate and innervate the upper lining of the nasal cavities. The name cribriform means in the form of a sieve, for obvious reasons. Pair number two is the optic nerves, and they're best represented by the optic chiasm, this X-shaped structure that sits right in front of the pituitary in the vicinity of the cella torsica. The remaining 10 pairs leave the CNS from the brainstem. Trying to memorize the exiting points of 10 different structures in such tight real estate seems a little bit of a strain, but you'll see that if we divide them up, it actually becomes quite easy. Pairs 3 and 4 exit the CNS through the pontomesencephalic junction, or in much plainer English, the wrinkle between the pons and the midbrain. Pair number 3, the oculomotor nerves, arises anteriorly, and pair number 4, the trochlear nerves, actually leaves the midbrain from behind, makes its way around, and goes forwards to reach the eyes. The name trochlear comes from the pulley that holds the muscle it innervates, but you can use that image to remember that the nerve also curves behind the brainstem as if it had a pulley there too. Pair number 5 exits directly through the pons, no difficulty here. From the pontomedullary junction emerge the pairs 6, 7, and 8. Pair 6 is the most medial, and pair 7 and 8 leave almost hand in hand a little bit more laterally. The remaining 4 pairs exit from the medulla itself. Let's do a very quick review of the medulla just to establish some landmarks. It has two sets of eminences or bulges, the pyramids in the middle and to their side the olives, named because of their shapes supposedly. <laughs> Between the pyramids is the anterior median fissure, this won't be relevant now. Between the pyramids and the olives there is the anterolateral sulcus. That's where the fibers of pair 12 emerge. On the other side of the olives, there are the posterolateral sulci, where pairs 9, 10, and 11 pop up. The nerve that's more medial has the bigger number, while the more lateral and posterior nerves are numbered before it. This defies the pattern that was going on until now, which was that the nerves were being numbered from medial to lateral. Maybe it is so because of the nuclei that originate these nerves. The ones from nerves 9, 10, and 11 are a cluster that starts higher than the 12th. But what will be easier to remember will be to think of the anterior-posterior divide. Things that are anterior are usually motor or efferent, while things that are posterior are sensory or afferent. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should check out the video on developmental anatomy of the nervous system. You can find it either by clicking up here or in the description below. Nerve 12 is a nerve that's exclusively motor, while nerves 9, 10, and 11 have an important sensory component. We need to make a brief comment about nerve 11 here as well. Most people remember it for controlling the SEM and trapezius muscles, but the part that innervates these muscles originates entirely from the spinal cord. Since that's outside of the cranium, it's questionable to consider this part as a cranial nerve in essence. The part of the nerve that actually has cranionuclei and compatible functions gets its fibers from the cluster of nuclei associated with the vagus nerve, being involved in the control of pharyngeal and laryngeal muscles, and sensation in the mouth and throat. This part readily leaves the accessory nerve to join the trunk of the vagus nerve, and this giving and receiving matters. creates all of this confusion that we're talking about. Okay, so that's all of the nerves. That's a lot of nuts! <laughs> Let's do a quick recap from the top, because that's the easiest way to remember them. Try to follow along using your fingers as the nerves, representing their directions and origins as we go through each level. First the olfactory nerves coming from the top, then the optic nerves doing the chiasm, nerves 3 and 4 in the pontomans encephalic junction, nerve 5 going through the pons, 6 in the middle, 7 and 8 on the side in the pontomedullary junction, and in the medulla, nerve 12 in the front, and nerves 9, 10 and 11 coming from the side. And that's it! I hope you can now quickly locate all the nerves. Go ahead and test yourself before you close this video. 
Check out the rest of the series on Neuro Anatomy. I promise you it's all good stuff. Subscribe if you're not already one of us, and stay tuned to learn more about mysterious and intriguing subjects that you wish were made more clear.